Welcome to Brick House, Heroes and Villains version. Today, our theme is going to be that God's power in me helps me to have faith. And so faith is kind of the big word we're going to be talking about today. And I wanted to see if you guys understood what that meant. So I, I, I called and asked one of you to send me a little video of what you thought faith meant. So let's check out Madison Cromer here and see what she has to say faith is. Faith is believing in something and knowing what you believe, like believing in Jesus. All right, Ms. Cromer, that is spot on. She said, faith is believing in something and knowing what you believe. So actually, if we go to define faith, we are probably going to go to God's word. And so right now, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, okay, is where we're going to be today checking things out. So go ahead and pause, turn to Hebrews chapter 11. And then we'll pick back up. Now, verse number one of Hebrews chapter 11 in your Bible probably reads something kind of like this. Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So I realize assurance and conviction um, are kind of big words. Um, and, and, and you may not understand what those two words mean. So there was another version uh, that I saw that I think explains it a little easier. It says, now faith is being confident. And you know what it means to be confident. That's you believe it. Just like Ms. Cromer says, believing in something. So faith is being confident of what we hope for or what we think. And then convinced about things we do not see. Because see, to have faith means that we, we have to be sure of something, even though we, we may or may not get to see it, but we believe it anyway. For instance, when I came and sat down in this chair, okay, I've sat in this chair over and over and over. So I have faith this chair is going to hold me. No, no doubt in my mind. And also, for instance, when I was your age, I had faith that each day when I got home from school that I would have food, that I had a place to come home to, that I'd have a place to go to sleep. It wasn't for sure that I'd have that, but I had faith knowing that would happen because it's kind of happened over and over. But then when we look at Hebrews chapter 11, that is what some refer to as like a hall of fame for people who had faith. So I encourage you at the end of our, our worship time today that you go back and read Hebrews chapter 11, the whole chapter. It won't take you too long, but it talks about people who had faith and Sometimes and when we have faith, we have to trust God in situations when it might be kind of hard, but we have to trust that he's going to take care of the situation. So for today's worship, we have a great video from Seeds Family Worship. This is a group who puts scripture together in fun type of songs. And the two verses that it's going to stress is Hebrews chapter 11, 1 and Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. And they do it in a little island version, man. So enjoy this song about faith from Seeds Family Worship. Of things 
Sing in my Jamaican accent, it makes me sound happy. I love to do it. So hopefully you enjoyed that song and hopefully all that's starting to stay in your brain because actually what you're doing with that song is you're learning God's word and that word is going to stay in your heart. And hopefully in situations when you need to have faith, you remember these lyrics and you remember that God is there for you. So I know we're ready to see what's going on with the heroes. So let's see what's going on with Dr. D. And poof. Welcome back, superheroes. For those of you who are new, my name is Director Stone, and I'm the supervisor at Hero Headquarters. I'm very pleased to tell you that Energizer Woman was able to remove the de-energizer romantic from Hero Headquarters before anyone was drawn in by its comfort. She even managed to trap Dr. D and Poof inside the de-energizer omatic, foiling their plan to cause villainy in the city and take over the world. You've done a great job spying on Dr. D and Poof, so I'm sending you back into their evil lair. Just remember, as superheroes, we don't always know how a mission will end. You may find yourself in situations where you have to trust God and have faith in Him, so make sure you keep that in mind. All right, heroes, if you're ready, let me hear you say, let's go. Superb. I'll activate the invisibility shield around you so you can enter the evil layer. Be ready to report back everything you see. Invisibility shield activated. It's about time someone noticed my evil villainy. I've been waiting for this issue of Villain World ever since they called me to do my interview. Oh, look. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad you got that magazine in the mail. You really have, uh, gained a little bit of confidence. Oh, let's read this part. It says, meet the master of all villainy. That's talking about me, Dr. D. Nile. Look down at this paragraph. 
It says that I have the most evil potential of everyone they've ever met. Yes, I, yes, I'm very, I'm very, very excited for you. Can we put the magazine down for now? We have a lot of work to do. Especially since Energizer Woman brought us down with that, but in that last battle. Speaking of which, track record. Listen to this part. It says, never before <clears throat> has there been a villain to embody the full meaning of evil. As leader of the extremely villainous Individuals League, Dr. D lives and breathes evil. Did you hear that, Poof? Soon, everyone will know that I am a powerful villain to be feared. second <laughs> that's not a spider it's a blueberry from the blueberry month that I had this morning oh, oh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah I was kidding you, you, you know that right I was totally kidding I was trying to test you yeah, yeah, yes uh, of course I, I knew and I, mean, I, I was kidding as well we should never tell anyone about what just happened okay it's already forgotten so, anyways, um, the comics. This is my favorite part of the Villain World magazine. In these comics, the villains always win. What's on the next page? Oh, oh this is the catalog part. This is the catalog part here. Listen, listen to me. Listen to me. This is where you can buy every villainous accessory you could ever need. They sell the newest steel for a secret lair, the most updated technology for your villain mobile, and new inventions for ultimate hero destruction! Is there anything good? Well, there are these matching spandex villain costumes that glow in the dark. How do you feel about spandex, Poof? I mean, I find that it doesn't really flatter me. I was thinking of hero destruction. Oh, right, right, right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, let's see. There's a magnetic indestructible shield that links to magnets in your villain outfit, allowing you to throw the shield and have it come right back to you. Hmm. That sounds like a hero type thing. I agree. How about this thing? It's a smoothie maker and a waffle maker. That would go great in the layer. Dr. D, focus! How about the vile Victor? That thing? Yes. I don't even know what that Duma Flachi does. I would have no idea what kind of evil to use that for. It's impossible to make a plan when you don't know the result. Fine, what about the demoralizer? It sounds evil. Hey look, pretty neat too, it's shiny. Oh, I do like shiny things, but generally only when referring to money or a brand new bike. We're getting off course. Oh. Again, look, the dem demoralizer is on sale. It's a BOGO. I just don't trust something that I don't understand, Poof. If you don't know what something does or how it works, you can't know the end result. Then if what? you don't know the end result, then you shouldn't do anything. That would be ridiculous. Then what are we going to do? You spend most of your time looking at yourself in the magazine. And we haven't even come up with a villainous plan to launch against the heroes. Oh, I just remembered. My Uncle Ed invents hero destroyers. He has this one that I have seen him use before, and I know it works because I've seen the end result. Now, where would it be? Where would it be? There! I knew it would be in here! The random thing generator! What exactly is it? And can you really trust someone 
was such a non-evil name like Ed. Well, his full evil name, villain name is Evil Doer. I just shorten it to Ed. I take that back. Completely trustworthy. The random thing generator. It's perfect. Just think about those heroes. When I launch this device, it will fire up random things. In the air, it says that it launches stink bombs, tear gas, and even dust storms. When the heroes don't know what's coming to them, they will never be able to defeat it. That actually is brilliant, Dr. D. We will be launching this into the, he the hero headquarters, right? No. I have an even better idea. We'll launch it into the most important government building within 100 miles. The Capitol Building! Then, the heroes will be so focused on trying to shut down the random thing generator, which they won't be able to, and trying to save all the people in these buildings, that they won't even notice us causing all kinds of villainy throughout the city. <laughs> Dr. D, I think you, you, you really outdone yourself this time. Villain World was right to give you that entire article and the Master of the All Villainy Award. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm going to order it right now. Um, let me use your villain card. Mine? You still owe me from when I spotted you at the Sushi Universe yesterday. Hurry! They're about to pick up! Now you owe me double. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hold on, hold on. They're here, they're here. Yes. Can you hold the magazine, please? please. Villain World Magazine? Yes, yes, yes. I'd like to order the random thing generator. Yes, I'll hold. They put me on hold. Can you believe that? Yes. Uh, 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 shh, the back, the back, the crotch. My villain card information? Yes. The name is Oswald Peter Pufikens. No, hold on. Oswald Peter Pufikens. Yes, that's it. That's it again. Yeah, yes, that's it. That's your full name? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah the number is uh, 8703 uh, 0011. Yes, yes, I only need one. Perfect. Thank you. That was easy. Peter Poofkins. Ooh. I wonder who that is. <laughs> That's my random thing generator. Already? That was fast. Yep. They promise instant delivery in order to speed up the process of world domination. Well, isn't that special? I can't wait to open it. This thing must be absolutely marvelously evil. <laughs> oh, poof. This is beautiful. It's a beautiful creation of evil. What are you waiting for? I want to see. I want to see. I want to see. Well, yes, of course, sir. But it will pack a powerful punch. It's kind of tiny. Well, uh, no, uh, something about it does not seem complete. It, it, it needs something. Uh, um, um, oh, uh. I know, it needs an O-Matic. The random thing generator O-Matic is quite a mouthful. Yes, yes, the name is perfect. Now, may I present the random thing generator O-Matic? So, how do we get it into the capsule building? Should I poof in there and place it somewhere and then poof out? No, no, you could risk someone seeing you. What if a hero happens to be there taking care of some kind of government business? Or better yet, we should disguise ourselves. We could pretend to be two innocent tourists taking pictures. We could place 
we could replace the batteries in our camera with the random thing generator automatic. Then we could get into the Capitol building, go into the bathroom, leave the camera, and walk out. And then boom! Everything there gets hit with the random thing generator. The bathroom? Uh, yeah. You know where you go when you know you gotta go. That place. I know what the bathroom is for, Pooh. I mean, the bathroom would be a great place to start the attack? I don't understand what you're saying. We flush the random thing generator o magic down the toilet here. We set the time on it to make sure that there's yeah. enough time to float all the way through the water pipes to the Capitol building. Then, when it's directly under the building, I will detonate, releasing all the randomly evil things imaginable. Wait, but what? Yes. Time is of the essence, Poof. We must get moving. Now, using my super smartness, I am going to calculate that it will take 4 minutes and 39 seconds to get from the water pipes here at the lair all the way to the Capitol building. Let me just set the timer. But, Dr. T, Dr. T, I really think you should think about... No more time, Poof. I sending this down the porcelain subway. Are you going to watch this? Are you coming to watch this with me? As in go into the bathroom with you? Fine. If you don't want to watch the beginning of our evil plan take place, then you must go get my village guide to take it over the world book. There's an excellent playbook in the back and it will help us come up with the ideas for what we can do throughout the city. All right, I will meet you in the elevator at the Villain Mobile Garage. Heroes, get ready to be taken by surprise. You won't be able to do anything if you don't know what you're up against. <laughs> Visibility Shield deactivated. Welcome back, superheroes. I hope you learned some valuable information while in the evil lair today. Now, are Dr. D and Poof scheming to take over the world? Of course they are. Are they launching a new invention toward Hero Headquarters? They aren't? Hmm. Are innocent lives at stake? Oh no. Are we under a time restriction? Is it less than five minutes? There's only one place the villains would send something to endanger innocent people, and that's the Capitol building. I'm not sure what we're up against. And from your information, it doesn't sound like we have time to figure that out. But I know exactly which hero to send. Her name is Adopter Girl, and she can adapt to any situation. If she was drowning, she would turn into a fish. If she was falling from a tall building, she would turn into a bird or kite. Adapter Girl doesn't always know what's coming at her, but she does know that God's power in her will give her the faith to trust Him no matter what. I'll send her now. Adapter Girl has been deployed. Great. In the meantime, let's take a closer look at her file. Iris? What does Adapter Girl's file say about where her inspiration comes from? Adapter Girl reports that her inspiration comes from a series of newspaper articles featuring the heroic actions of a brave woman named Jochebed, retrieving articles. King decrees Hebrew baby boys to be killed. God's people, the Hebrews, are working as slaves in Egypt. Sources say the king is greatly threatened by their growing number of people. Latest reports show that the king has made a decree that any Hebrew baby boy is to be killed. A local Hebrew woman named Jochebed has recently given birth to a baby boy. Because of the king's order for every Hebrew baby boy to be killed, Jochebed was thought to be hiding her son in her home. But recently, Jochebed was seen putting her baby boy in a basket 
and placing him in the Nile River. This goes against the king's decree, which means that if the baby is found, he could be killed. A young girl named Miriam, who some say is the baby's sister, has been seen following along the river, watching the baby boy. Jochebed doesn't know what will happen to her baby, but we will keep you up to date on the latest news. Princess Finds Baby Today the king's daughter found a crying baby in a basket floating down the Nile River. The baby is believed to be the same baby placed in the river by Jochebed. Although this is a Hebrew baby, the princess has decided to keep him. Baby Returned to Mother the princess has decided to keep the Hebrew baby who was found floating down the Nile River. However, the princess is not able to care for him since he is so young. Miriam, the baby's sister who followed him down the river, has stepped forward and offered to find a Hebrew woman to help care for the baby. Reports indicate that Miriam has taken her brother to his mother, Jochebed. An inside source claims that Jochebed will return the baby to the princess once he is older. The princess has decided to name him Moses. We look forward to keeping you updated on the latest news about this special baby. Thank you, Iris. I do love the story of Moses. His mother, Jochebed, had great faith and placed him in the river, even when she didn't know what would happen. She was able to trust God no matter what. So I'm sure you can see why I chose Adapt-A-Girl to combat Dr. D and Pooh's villainy. This just in, Director. Adapt-A-Girl has succeeded in battle against Dr. D's random thing, Generator Omatic. Adapt-A-Girl fought against a dust attack by shape-shifting into a giant feather duster. She also became a garden full of roses to combat a hidden stink bomb. Adopter girl had faith like Jochebed, and she trusted God even when she didn't know what would happen. Well, heroes, today has been another success. Until your next mission, remember, God's spirit is in you and is more powerful than the one that's in the world. Now go and be victorious. In our story just now, Poof tried to convince Dr. D to get a demoralizer. But Dr. D didn't want to because he didn't understand how it would work. So he was a little scared or afraid because he didn't know how everything would work out. And in our story from the Bible, we saw Jochebed. She didn't know how anything would work out either, but she had faith and trusted that God would take care of her baby. And so she was okay putting that baby there because she knew God was eventually going to take care of it. And when we look at that story, we see an amazing story of Moses and what he accomplished. All amazing things. I challenge you to go back in Hebrews chapter 11 and start thinking about all the people that were recognized for their faith in God. And I hope that helps you to realize that when we're in times when we don't know and, and we need to trust and have faith in God, that he's going to be there and that we can count on him. Okay, so let's go ahead and pray. And I encourage you to read Hebrews 11 this week. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and talk to God. Dear Lord, I just thank you for our story from your word. I pray, Lord, that as we think in Hebrews chapter 11, as we look at all those people that had such amazing faith, that you help us to have faith when we're nervous, when we're scared, when we think that we can't accomplish something. Lord, help us to know we can do great things for you. And Lord, help us to have faith in you. We love you. Amen. We'll see you next week. Heroes and Villains.